Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back talking about redfish misconceptions the same day that redfish secrets. I am holding it in my hand so that you guys are watching. Redfish secrets, the ultimate guide to catching more inshore redfish using science based trends. Luke, you spent a lot of time on this book. Sure did. Yeah, it's um, it's really just uh, kind of the the culmination of of what took me from a super frustrated angler um, where it was just just really struggled to catch redfish. Grew up bass fishing, absolutely loved bass fishing. Started learning saltwater, caught my first snook, caught my first redfish. Now I'm super addicted to saltwater fishing. And I had a really tough time transitioning over because um, I knew how bass moved around throughout the seasons. And I, I knew a little bit about redfish and I would catch some. And then I would have like three good days and then I would have three bad days and I had zero control over it. It was very frustrating. And, uh, and so we, I basically go through that, that kind of journey, if you will, and then talk about the, the biggest findings. And, and also in a lot of the misconceptions that we'll go through as well. Yeah. And so we're going to hit the misconceptions here. And if you're listening and or watching, you can go directly to redfishsecrets.com. So we have our own separate URL for this www.redfishsecrets.com. And you'll see where you can get a, uh, a copy, a free copy of this. So what we're doing, at least for a limited time, this is 100 and, it's 113, 114 pages. It's, it's a legit book. And we are going to publish this on Amazon and sell it probably for $19.97, the $20 range. And what we want to do first, because once you publish a book, it's a little bit, you can, yeah, you can make changes, but you got to completely take it off Amazon. It's a pain. I've published a few books myself. Basically, when you put it on there, you, you want it to be good for at least a year or two, if not longer. It is not fun to have to take it off and make changes. So what we want is some feedback from, from you guys. And you'll be one of the first people to read it. Uh, completely free. We're just going to give you the actual manuscript uh, in a PDF form. You could print it off like I have here in my hand, or you can read it on your computer. And we just want feedback. Any uh, any and all candid feedback. There's going to be some areas I think you're going to be blown away on just the simplicity of catching redfish. Uh, and, and we're going to beat up some of these misconceptions. Uh, you're going to love like the, the part about 90-10. You guys, for many of you have watched the 90-10 webinar or the 90-10 trainings that we've done about putting you in the feeding zone, right? That 90% of all feeding redfish are in about 10% of an area. We spent a lot of time on that. I know you're going to love that chapter. We talk a little bit about, about lures and the techniques, but the majority of the time is spent on structure, on finding the actual feeding fish. So redfishsecrets.com is the URL. You can put your email in there and we will shoot it off to you along with a couple of free uh, bonus videos. But for now, I hope you stay tuned to this entire episode because we're going to share some other things that, that, um, that maybe were in the book, but just we didn't cover as much. And it's some of these misconceptions. So um, I, I kind of want to kick it off with the, the first one, which you kind of touched on it and it's it's because i know i've read the book and it's a reason that you and i were really inconsistent and frustrated and it's going back to the same old spots over and over again right we catch a redfish we're all guilty of this even even the best pros are guilty of this until they like hit themselves in the head a couple of times and realize what they're doing you catch a great fish or maybe a school of fish in an area and you keep going back to that same area, never really thinking, hey, was it not a fluke, but maybe there's a reason they were only here during this tide or, or this period. Uh, maybe it was only because of this moon phase or it was because the, the bait, the certain type of bait was in this one air in this one specific time. And yet many of us, like you and I, went back to the same handful of spots. I mean, for years, it wasn't like a couple of weeks or a month, like I'm talking years and some days would be on fire and then five trips in a row, we wouldn't even see a sign of a fish. So let's talk about that. Cause I think that's a misconception that we, we can't talk about enough is, is, yeah. the, is the spots versus the type of spot based on trends and, and real, real weather and real science. Yeah, it's by far the biggest issue. And and we call it the, the GPS spot is usually how we refer to yep. it's the guys who it's, it's kind of treat inshore fishing like bottom fishing. That's a it's a very big mistake. We all do it. It's impossible to to uh, you basically have to force yourself to not do it to finally stop doing it. And, and, and what happens, right? So how it happens, I should say, is that we go out 
And Joe, I remember our first time, uh, it was it was Dennis Oss. It was our first time catching a slam. We caught multiple redfish. We caught snook and trout all in one spot. And we were like, we were high five. We were so excited because we were just like, finally, we have a spot. Like, cause that, cause in our mind, we weren't catching fish because we didn't know what spots to go to. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't have the number. We didn't have the numbers. Give us yeah, some, co some coordinates. coordinates. And, we were, and we were buying all like all those, uh, you know, the spot maps, like the um, top spots. I don't, know, I don't even want to say names, but we had. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. We bought them all, and I literally bought like for Tampa, uh, or even Charlotte Harbor, where we used to go to a lot. I, I literally have multiple maps because before a trip, I couldn't find it, and then I like immediately go to Walmart and buy another one, just because like we had to have our spots. And, and the problem with that mentality is that the spots are fixed. The spots are, are, are fixed spots. And when fish aren't comfortable for whatever reason, whether it's too cold, too warm, too windy, right? Too much water movement, too much this human pressure, right? If they're not comfortable, they're gonna move. And, and so one spot is gonna be good in some situations, but it's very rare, it's almost impossible for one spot to always hold fish, to always be good. And so it, it's the the crucial thing, which we go through in this book and we go through it in the, in the online courses we have, as well as the Insider Club, because it's so important, is we just have to get it out of that mindset on, on, a, on an actual spot. It's more about the type of spot based on the conditions. And if the conditions don't include the weather, right? The trending warm, trending cold, the wind speed, the wind direction, if, if that isn't part of the equation, you're gonna be you're gonna be like like most anglers are is that it's just super frustrating. It's gonna be a flip of the coin. If if you don't put it all together, it's a flip of the coin. Granted, I mean you can still catch a lot of fish. There's just gonna be a lot of a lot of frustrating days. And um and, and so yeah, the uh, the overall misconception mm -hmm. is just going back to the same spot over and over and over again. I literally went to the the effort of printing out the tide chart. So I'd actually print out a piece of paper and have the tide, the, the tide graph throughout the day. And I would, I would put marks on it, like literally with a pen, I put marks on it with little um, annotations on the species that I caught so that I could, and I would store it. So that way I could look at it the next year and see, okay, like what did I, you know, okay, this is the same day, the same year, the same moon phase. Okay, I caught four redfish at this spot on this tide the, and then I will go there and it didn't work most of the time. And I was just like, you have to be kidding me. I'm doing this research. I'm putting my time in. It was very, very frustrating, but the wind was different. Or, you know, if it's in the winter, it was a warmer winter or a colder winter compared to normal. So um, long story short, it just focusing on spots without considering the, the, the actual movement of the fish and the, and the fish's biology and how it reacts to the conditions you're going to struggle. Yep. And, and we, we still see it like in our Facebook, even in our insider club, you, you get some newer members that, that come in and, and quickly they learn that, that it's not just about asking, Hey, I'm in this area. Can someone just show me some spots? Uh, why the insider club, the salt strong insider club is so helpful is you have a lot of great coaches and a lot of great mentors and, and a lot of great anglers who have really kind of figured it out and then know to ask the, the right type of questions. All right. Like, Hey, tell me what day you're going there and let's, let's go to smartfishingtides.com. Let's look to see, you know, what, what, what the forecast looks like. Let's look to see what the wind direction is going to be. Uh, let's look to, to look at the, the tides. When are we going to have some good current flow, right? Uh, it's not just about, that GPS spot. That was probably the number one thing holding us back. Um, and, and, and you see some of these people, they get so angry too about, oh, they were in my spot too. I really believe one of the, the coolest things is finding new spots, right? I mean, go back to that time that you found that spot the very first time. How awesome was that? Uh, how much more fun would it be to do it over and over and over again? every month right go find new spots it, it, adventure i mean that's to me that's a big part of a uh, fishing is the exploration of it and trying new areas and kind of figuring out this this never-ending puzzle if you will and uh, so I, I think if you just take one thing away try some new spots try something completely different uh still you know use the science use the the trends if you're an insider member you know use some of the the kind of the shortcuts if you will and the smart fishing game plan we do every week to help you out but try some new areas uh it, it you'll be blown away with what you find out there 
Yeah, uh, and, and when you hear that, if you kind of cringe, it's like, oh man, like I'm not going to waste my Saturday exploring new area because I don't know any spots there. Like that's a sign that you're too fixed on GPS spots. Yes. And and because part of uh, part of the Salt Strong is, um, you know, every week we do insider reports, and so we go to new areas and 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 you know uh, record the pre-trip planning. We actually go there, fish it, and then share what happened. And it is remarkable how consistent the type of spot is. It, once you have the type of spot based on the conditions, you can pick that up and move it to a different city, even a different state, um, different, different, just like geographical things all together. As long as you're targeting the same species, they react to the same conditions the same way. So a redfish in Florida reacts the same as a redfish in the Carolinas as a redfish over in Texas. They, they all read, they have the same biology, the same makeup. So as the water is getting warmer or cooler, they're gonna move the same exact way. And, and, and then based on the warmer, cooler uh, and, and the other variables like wind and, and pressure, you know, all that come into play. And is once you get that dialed in, you can literally pick up that recipe and move and, and, go, and, and go out to new spots and have success. Um, it's, it is, I would not have believed it. If you told me this, uh, if I was listening to this years ago, I wouldn't believe it, but it's true. And it, it is, uh, it has been, it has been remarkable and it's been awesome to hear feedback. We have a redfish course, um, that launched probably four years ago now. Yeah. And a lot of amazing feedback from customers really all around from Florida to Texas on the Gulf, Florida to even Maryland on the Atlantic. And those, again, those, those fish, they react the same way that they, that they're not as smart as we uh, typically give them credit to because all they're doing is they're reacting to their environment. They're, they're cold blooded. If it gets, again, if it gets out of their comfort zone, they're not gonna sit there and take it. They can't moderate their, their body temperature. The only way they can change their body temperature is to use their fins and swim and find some, some more comfortable conditions. And uh, so once you know where they're gonna be and then and, and how to find the warm pockets or the cool pockets or the, the areas with more oxygen, um, then you can you, you can surprise yourself with uh, with how quick you can get dialed into them. Speaking of moving, another thing that you cover in depth in Redfish Secrets is tides. I know just from <laughs> growing up, we watched a lot of TV shows, some better than others. I mean, fishing TV shows. I'm not talking about watching Sesame Street. Um, we also read a lot of magazines. Florida Sports and Magazine, love it. We got featured in it one time as, as youngsters. It was pretty cool. But one thing that I think was, oh, was just a sin that they did was convince us all that you had to go catch redfish only on the incoming tide. That was the tide, right? I mean, that was something that I felt was just, and we believed it, right? It was a massive misconception that, oh, if you want to go out there and catch redfish, you really need to fish that incoming tide. Uh, talk about that r real quick and, and why that's uh, not true at all. Well, it's, I mean, just like most things, there are times when that is true, sure. and, but there's going to be times when it's not. So it's not that it's not true. It's just not always true is really the, the uh, I think the, the, the conclusion that I finally came to. So just the ties in general, the, a, a fish isn't, regardless of species, a fish, a fish isn't going to just sit around and wait for the perfect tide. And then as soon as it's not that perfect tide, they're just gonna sit there and, and not eat anything and just wait. Okay, I'm, you know, it's not the right tide yet. I don't feel the right current flow coming. It's not coming from the perfect angle. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait. They're not doing that. They're, they're you know, they, they're, so they're gonna, if they see a good meal coming in front of their face, odds are they're gonna try to take a swipe at it. So the key is, is just to know where they move. So the fish will be moving based on the tide. And, and so for the tidal flow, I now could care less if it's coming in or out. Um, I, I prefer incoming a little bit in the summertime, I, but I prefer outgoing in the wintertime. Um, but the biggest thing is it just needs to be moving because that's what is gonna be cause, you know, ringing the, the dinner bell for predators. And, and so it's just, yeah, again, for many years, Joe, we would plan our trips around a, a, a time of the month that had like a big high tide in the middle of the day so that we could fish that incoming tide and then like we would plan our trip okay like here's our here's our window and if we couldn't fish that one window it's like devastation or if we're in that window and then somebody's in our spot then it's like oh my gosh the the double you know, wheels are falling off 
Yeah, and so just 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 I think those two in particular are are the probably the two biggest issues with people getting consistent redfish results, being you know um, too focused on the spots in general, and then trying to fit this one little window, this one little tide window. When in reality, those fish are going to be moving around and they're going to be likely to eat. Even on bad tides, you can still catch them some redfish. Yes, absolutely. Um, you just want, to your point, hammer it. You want water flow, right? It's all, it's about this current. It's not about, hey, is this incoming route going? Uh, your point earlier, you, you mentioned it. There are certain times of the year where one could be better than the other if you, if you had to pick. Uh, but we've caught so many amazing redfish on outgoing tide. We've caught a lot on incoming tide. Uh, it, it is not a, a one or the other. Uh, they both will work. Yeah, it's go when you can go. Yes. What's the best time to fish when you can when you can get out there? And obviously, you know, in, in part of the entire club is we talk about every week, you know, what what's trending, like what are the, what are the trends? Sometimes the, like the twilight period trumps any tide phase, or I'll rather be fishing as the sun's coming up or as the sun's going down, and I could care less about the tide. Um, and then others, it's all about it's really tide focused. So it, it is just like most things, it, it's very rare where there's a one size fits all. You have to fish this certain tide or this certain spot. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of variables. Um, not, not a lot. There's about a half dozen variables. And, uh, and once you learn how to kind of put them together, there's really, it's like half science, half art. Once you learn how, what, you know, what the variables are and then how to structure them based on the season, uh, that's when the magic happens. Yep. All right. Next misconception we also cover here in Redfish Secrets. You can get your free copy right now at redfishsecrets.com for a limited time. But we've had on Captain C. Richardson, we've had him, you know, we've done some master courses with him. We've had Captain Mike Anderson from Real Animals and Captain Peter Deeks, who is a pretty much a live bait guy. He's the elephant hunter. And all three of them, I've asked them all the same question in their podcast interviews, like, hey, what's like one thing holding back the weekend warriors or what's one of the biggest mistakes that you see a lot of the weekend warriors making and all three of them even peter deeks who's a live bait guy said it's not knowing how to catch fish with artificial lures just said it makes everything easier because there are times of the year when live bait is tough to get there are times of the year or times of the day when you only have 30 minutes to fish and you don't have time to take a net out there or buy a bunch of bait or the, the bait shops closed or out of bait at the end of the day. There are so many times when you're literally missing out on the best bite because you're focused only on live bait. Ask us how we know. That's all we did. I mean, the, right? We would not even attempt to go out fishing without live bait for many, many years. So we get it. We understand that mentality. And it felt like a whole new world opened up literally a whole new world when we could go out there and catch redfish like consistent and big redfish my biggest redfish still to date is on artificial lure i mean you can catch massive massive amounts and size of redfish with nothing but a small little paddle tail or shrimp lure it is fascinating and all three of those guys said the same thing so i, I think uh, and i know you agree with me because we talk a, a lot about it in redfish secrets that is a massive misconception that you have to have live bait or cut bait to catch redfish yeah and i'll dare say that artificial lures is in most cases for most anglers not we'll say most but for majority of anglers better than my bait oh and and before before you hang up and say this guy's full of it um you might be saying okay like but I, i've been out with guys before or i see these tv shows and they're all using live bait and if, if you so live bait if you're on the water every day and you know exactly where to catch the bait and you know exactly where the redfish are holding then obviously you can't beat that, right? That's because the guys are on the water every day. They know exactly where the bait is. They can go catch bait really fast. And they know the exact specific spots that the redfish are holding and they go throw those bait there. If you put a live bait in front of a redfish and a lure right next to it, they're gonna hit live bait, obviously. Where, where lures start getting the advantage is for those of us who aren't on the water every day. Um, when I was learning the ropes here, um, I was in the corporate world I could only fish the weekends. And so like maximum once per week I was fishing and I didn't know where the bait was because it would, the conditions would change, the bait would move. And then so would the, the fish. And so it would take me a little bit longer to catch bait than a guide. And then it would, then I, I can't travel around much because when you do have live bait, you have to go a little bit slower. You can't fish as fast. You can't cover as much water. 
And so when you when you're using lures, conversely, is you can skip the entire bait catching altogether. Yeah. Um, now I, I literally have had multiple times when I'm getting out right when the sun's coming up, starting to fish as the sun's coming up, which is the best bite. And then you look over and you can see all the light, light bait guys. They're all out there chumming bait. They're chumming in the best bite, the best time to catch fish. And I'm having a blast with top water, getting red slap on top water. Even sometimes heading in, like I've already done in the morning, usually I rarely fish more than three hours. Um, and, and so and a lot of people are, you know, just now getting their bait and now they're starting to go fishing. And so the, the lures, again, the huge advantage of lures is you don't have to waste time with live bait. You can start fishing immediately. And more importantly, you can cover a lot of area. Um, and it's really becomes a numbers game. Obviously, again, if you have one fish and you can cast to it, it would be the odds of getting it to hit would be much higher with live bait. But if you can reach 100 more fish with a lure, if you can get a lure in front of 100 more fish's noses uh, compared to live bait, I would rather have artificial lure in that case. It's, it's literally just a numbers game. It's covering ground. Um, Cause if you're not out there every day, you're going to need to go to, so even if you, even if you have the, the trends dialed in, right. The, 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 the type of spot based on the conditions, um, there's always going to be situations where a dolphin could have just gone through there right before you arrived. Um, somebody could be in your spot in one of the spots you chose, all sorts of things come up. Sometimes just fish aren't there and there's nothing we can do about it. And so it's very important to be able to pick up and move and go try multiple spots. Cause as long as you have the right trends dialed in, you can pick three to five spots and at least two or three of those are gonna hold fish. And if you don't have time to hit all those correctly with live bait, the lures, the lures win. Even yeah. doing tournaments, when I was doing tournaments, going against people with uh, even full-time guides with live bait, I was still using lures most of the time and we were competing. Uh, we were not winning every time, but we, we were profitable in those tournaments again just because we covered way more way more water than anybody else did we remember, that, a bit remember that one tournament uh you and and me and dad did that was an invitational tournament so we had to get an invite in boca grand area and it's two days and th there's some really amazing fishermen and some of these guys had you know one hundred and sixty thousand dollar inshore boats i mean it was just like it was a little bit intimidating and so we're the we're the new guys we get invited to go from our cousin and we told them at the captain's meeting that we were going to be team artificial that, and they la they literally were laughing at us. Like it, no one in the entire tournament was like 40 boats were using lures. They were all live bait. They're all live bait guys, but we had one big advantage. One, we know how to use artificial lures, but two, you remember how the storm that came through. And so it was like crazy windy. Like it had messed up all the conditions for bait. And we don't live in Boca Grande. A lot of the, some of the guys are in that area. Some weren't, but bait was impossible to find that first day. So we went out immediately. I mean, within the first hour and started catching fish and some of the other boats, they, they were taking three, four hours to get their, their bait. And so like, we had such a massive advantage. And after two days and yeah, we had to work for it, but, uh, but we did, we found some really good uh, shorelines and some really good mangrove points. And we ended up placing, we got, we were the, was it second or third? I know we weren't first, but we won over a thousand dollars. I mean, it was like a legit win, uh, won some, some real cash and, uh, we were in the top three. And I mean, I, you should have seen their faces when, when, the, when they, sh we showed up that second day with our numbers and they're just like, they did not believe us. There's like no way you guys were using artificial lures. And, and it's such a massive advantage for all of those points. You can cover so much more water. You can, find the feeding zone so much faster and you don't have to sit there and waste the first hour or two or three and then that's an extreme example but that's what happened that that weekend catching uh catching bait you're out there the second you hit the water making cast doing some uh you know doing some exploring uh i love it uh to me like it's it, it, it feels like it almost slows you down when you have to get live bait and, and yeah i know there's a there's a, a need for it. and a couple guys were were full time guides there and and I, we asked them afterwards we we're having some beers and they were all picking our brains on where we were fishing and stuff and I, I asked a couple of the the guys and I was like well you know you take your clients out with live bait you know and 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 I, there's a couple reasons one it does work uh, two Luke mentioned earlier they know where the live bait is and they know where the fish are uh, and three it's it's tougher for a newbie to use artificial lures and you got hooks flying around and jig heads. 
And I was like, what, what would you use if, if, if you could only pick one? And all the guides said, I use artificial lures. If, Cause they don't even know what the fish are. They're like, there's just something cool about getting a reaction strike from a big snook or a big redfish or a big trout or flounder uh, on, a, on a fake artificial lure. There's just something so cool about it. And just being able to cover a whole lot more ground. Uh, that part's fun too, versus just sitting there, especially in the summertime, man. Just sitting there baking in the hot sun with no breeze, and uh, I think to me that just seems brutal. Um, so we we talk a lot about that in Redfish Secrets. What lures to use, just how to simplify it too, right? You don't need fifty thousand lures. You don't even need ten. I mean, we simple it down. I think just to two, yeah, two lures in shallow water and two for a little bit deeper. Keep it super super simple. And if you go fishing with us, or even if you watch some of our live podcasts, you notice rarely do we have more than a couple lures uh keep it super simple just based on what the fish are doing what depth they're holding in and, and what what type of area we're fishing yeah and it really is i don't want this to come across that we're saying live bait doesn't work it obviously does and oh we've said multiple times it yeah. works it's just there's a big misconception that you have to have it and, yes. and to me it's, it's unique in like the bass fishing world where i came from it's like most people use artificial lures and in a, in a small percentage use live bait and then go transition to inshore saltwater, and it's the opposite. It flips. Most people use live bait, and, and this is a smaller segment use lures. And it's just interesting because I feel that that redfish, snook, and trout. Um, I, I feel like the inshore saltwater fish are, are more aggressive too. So I feel like they're more. I, I can more easily catch redfish in the middle of the day than I can uh, bass. Um, it's just interesting. So I just think that it's the live bait mentality is holding a lot of people back yeah. um, because it really just boils down to finding the fish. That's really what it boils down to. These fish are pretty aggressive. Um, as long as they're, they're not super uncomfortable, they're going to likely be eating. And, and it's just about finding fish. And when you use artificial lures, you can cover more ground, which will help you find the fish more easily and more consistently, most importantly. And, so your, that's really, and your confidence, that's really, your confidence will go up because you'll just feel like, hey, I just got a fish to hit a fake lure. But right? if you told him, if you told a, a Mike Iaconelli that you caught a 10 pounder and he says, hey, what lure do you use? Like, Actually, I used a live shiner. He'd slap you. He wouldn't, they wouldn't even count that. <laughs> so that's a, probably a stretch, but you know. It's, <laughs> no, I, I'm uh, sure that's, I'm fun. sure. And, and so another cool right thing, now. like when Joe was talking about that tournament, you know, people, people ask where we fish, like everywhere. Like literally, well, if you're using artificial lures and you're fishing for a whole day, yeah especially two days you can cover the entire area and it's just it's fun you can just see a lot more stuff you see a lot more manatees see a lot more you know spotted eagle rays you have more chances to come across cobia on those eagle rays or or trailing manatees it's just uh i don't know it's just a little bit more of an adventure i would say but again if you can as long as you're finding the redfish you can use whatever you want yep um, but if you're not out there every day it, it's just harder to do it with live bait uh, but if you know where they are, if you have a situation where you know where they are uh, and you have live bait and you get on a good, a good pot of redfish, you can, you can catch an absolute ton of them. And it's, it's really hard to, hard to win there, but on a consistent day in, day out throughout a long period, my, uh, you know, my, my time and money goes to, to lures just because of, of covering so much more water. Amen. And we cover all that in redfish secrets. And so on to misconception number four, it's along the same lines is the wrong types of tackle uh, in particular just going way too heavy right on in terms of your braided line in terms of your reel your rod uh, we've seen posts right and and some of them are just innocent because they just don't know some of them just like i mean just too thick skull to like really do it because they've heard a million times but you see some of these guys oh i got my six thousand spinning outfit to go catch a redfish like what are you are you catching an elephant I mean, we, we've caught 40 plus inch redfish on, I mean, you, I, I usually, usually a 3000 reel, but you probably even on 2,500, like you don't have to have a 6,000 series reel in, you know, 50 pound braided line to, to do it. Uh, we can poke fun of the bass guys a little bit because they do that to catch ditch pickles. But let, let's talk about that, about just using the wrong tackle. And in, in most cases it's, it's going too heavy and just too big. Yeah, too heavy and too heavy is a big one, and 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 not not even just twenty five hundred, like two thousand, even one thousand. So now, like a one thousand size spinning reel, if you're using ten pound braid that holds one hundred fifty yards of braid, it's a little small one thousand, 
150 yards is way more line than you'll need to catch any size redfish as long as it's unless maybe if it's a uh, a 50 pounder in like a, a inlet with really strong current but if you're fishing the inshore the normal inshore waters bays creeks rivers you, you do not need a 4,000 5,000 plus size reel um, it, it's the smaller smaller is better and in many cases for redfish a thing that we did wrong for again for many years is we we were using our bass tackle for many years I was a bait caster only I thought that spinning tackle was for uh was for just newbies that didn't know how to fish. So I was using my bait caster and that's all I used. And, and with, with bass fishing, it's awesome. You're doing a lot of short, you know, short distance pitching, some, some accurate cast to like structure that's pretty close by. For redfish, in many cases, they're pushed up in the shallows. They're, they're pushing up in the shallow water. And when they get there, you know, they're on, they're on edge. They're on a little bit edge because they're, they're a little bit exposed. They're, they're up there because of the food, that's where they're up there feeding. But it's shallow water. They grow up with birds diving on them. They have, in many cases, they have a lot of humans targeting them. And so they're, they're wary. And, and so you can't, you can't get away with short casts. And so very, very important is to do everything you can to maximize your casting distance. And so um, some test, we do a lot of experiments. And, uh, and so I did some tests on like a 20 pound braid versus a 10 pound braid. So I had a, a 3000 size reel the same rod, the same reel. One of the only difference was that one had 25 or a 20 pound braid. The other one had 10 pound braid. And the casting distance was about 20% further for the 10 pound. And that's a big deal. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you run the numbers, it was like, I believe it was every 15 casts. It was like 15 to 20 casts. So every 15 to 20 casts with the 10 pound braid, I'm now covering an extra football field of, of actual water. And that's, that's ideal strike zone water, right? Because the so I'm on NFL away... football or European soccer, uh, either one, it's round, round <laughs> It's a big, a big uh, field, a big field. Yeah, it's a big field. Yeah. It's a big field. <laughs> um, and again, it's, it's all the ideal strike zone because that's going to be the furthest distance away from you. Those fish are going to have less idea that there's danger in the area. They're going to be more likely to eat. There's really not much more you can do to guarantee you'll be catching more fish than to increase your casting distance. And so I transition from bait cast to spinning gear because up in the shallows, um, you, you can't really get away with those big heavy jigs like we uh, like we throw for bass a lot. It's, it's light lures. It's, uh, it's really the ability to cast light lures very long distances and to repeat it over and over again. And so now with, with the advent of braid, um, the once once I started using it and and tried it uh, spinning uh, just a, a decent size, a decent spinning reel with a quality rod and 10 pound braid, game changer, absolute game changer. It launches lures, you can cast effortlessly and it can handle big fish. It can handle surprisingly big fish. I've got multiple 40 plus inch reds, snook, tarpon, um, cobia, every, like th th as long as you have a good knot, like the FG knot, we've done a lot of knot tests too. Um, that, that, that line is super strong. It's awesome. So I, I was a total mono fan and then finally tried braid and I was blown away. You can feel strikes better. You can cast further. It lasts way longer. And, uh, I know it costs a little bit more when you first get it, but it, it lasts long enough to, I think, make the, the cost of wash, like the cost per usage compared to mono, I think it's pretty close. Um, and I did another casting contest on mono versus braid. So I did a 10 pound mono versus a 10 pound braid everything else equal and it was it was uh it, it actually was closer the mono did a little bit better than the 20 pound braid compared to the 10 but it but the, the 10 still won and the 10 won on day on the first day and then for all those of us who use mono we know that particularly on spinning gear it's it's going to be cooling up pretty quick so after usage the mono will the the casting ability of mono will decrease considerably and conversely with braid, at least most braids that I've been testing, some, some don't last so long, but in most braids, it'll, it'll actually stay the same, if not improve a little bit as the line becomes a little bit more nimble. Um, and so over time, again, braid is a game changer. So if you're still using mono with spinning tackle, highly, highly recommend switching over to braid. Yes, and, and just in general, going down a little bit 
on the heavy gear. Peter Deeks talks about that all the time. He talks about that's one of the biggest mistakes he sees. You know, these guys going out there looking like they're going after Marlin. And he's like, you're going to, you're going to miss fish. Sometimes it's even just having way too thick a line and the bend in the line. If you're in, you know, a little bit deeper water, he's like, all, all this little stuff matters. Like focus on getting the strike first and then figure out how you're going to get that big boy in the, in the, in the boat. Um, but you, you, you continually surprise me. This was a misconception that one of the reasons we, we have it here at the end, uh, I didn't really get it right. Cause we can make that, that, that same justification. Well, Hey, the bass guys are, you know, catching, bass and they're using 50 pound braid and they're just you know slinging these uh these things in and the fish can't see the line it doesn't really matter but i watch you continually getting lower and lower i, I watched you know you and i from we only fished four thousands for a while remember it was like four thousand you had to have a big one in case you got that big snooker red and then you went down to three thousand twenty five hundred even a thousand uh, series reels in the line i mean even getting down to eight to ten pound braid and luke mentioned earlier the ability to cast, that was another thing that most of the guests have said. If you can practice one thing, even in your backyard, practice casting. You remember, Luke, we went out recently and you and I hadn't fished in a while because of COVID and our house was on quarantine and all that, even though we didn't get it. Uh, daughter's class did. And I've been in the backyard practicing a lot of cast. Try, I'm trying to cast uh, this little fake lure into uh into the kids trampoline and luke's like man like your skip casting has gotten a whole lot better and so i'm just constantly trying to do that uh there's a lot of stuff you can do out on the water which brings us to misconception number five there's this misconception that the only way to get better at fishing is on the water i just mentioned earlier one thing you do off the water is even in your backyard but the other piece are things like books. I read constantly. One of our most downloaded podcasts was on scent, and that was from a book that we read. Slam Shady was, was created from intel that we discovered from an optometrist, optometrist, an eye specialist, who wrote a book about what fish really do see underwater. No, it's not the same thing they see in a tackle store. We have the Redfish Mastery Course that we came up with. Luke mentioned it earlier. It's our number one overall top selling course of all time. We've had, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of testimonials of people that said, I literally had my fishing game changed or I caught my personal best fish. I caught more redfish than I ever have in my entire life, all because of the intel that I got from this course. Even on a rainy day, even during the middle of a hurricane, if you're evacuated, you can be studying things like Redfish Mastery, the Redfish Secrets book, and constantly becoming better. Yes, you obviously have to go out in the water and practice what you learn. But I mean, this is 20 plus years of intel. This is 20 plus years of learning how to catch redfish the hard way. Right. I mean, if you could spend three hours with a flip palette or a CA and just pick their brain or, or my brother Luke on everything they've learned and all the mistakes they've made, we've covered just a handful of the small misconceptions. All of it is contained in books like this. And of course, the video based version of this, which takes it to a whole nother level to actually see someone fish a real spot and see exactly how someone sets the hook and how they're casting and how they're positioning their boat. That's what we teach in these courses and that's why we hammer this stuff over and over again it's not what you see out there on youtube youtube is great for getting like a small little piece right a small segment even i mean we have a very popular youtube channel it's great there's small little like bits and pieces these courses and even a book that's where you tie it all in together right it's the difference between a 120 page book and a two page PDF that just has a bunch of bullet points on it, right? You get some of it, but you're always going to be asking the question, well, he didn't really cover this. And that's why we hammer home these mastery courses. And that's why we hammer home this book. This is a great starting point. Uh, once you get into this, I have a feeling if you haven't already gone through Redfish Mastery, you're going to want to get it like ASAP. And you might even have an opportunity. We might even throw something in special for anyone who gets this book to get Redfish uh, Mastery as, uh, as well, if you don't have it. But get this, go to redfishsecrets.com. I'm telling you, that is, I think, one of the biggest misconceptions out there is so many fishermen don't study stuff. They don't even do pre-trip planning, right? So many of them are just like, oh, I'm just going to have to learn this the hard way. It's mind-boggling, right? We, we talk about golf, that analogy. 
right? If you want to get good at golf, what, what does everyone do? They don't just go to a driving range until they get good. Some do, the stubborn ones do, and most of them, they at least go get a lesson, right? You go hire, hire a guide. You read golf books. You watch golf videos. There's a thing called Revolution Golf. Uh, it's a membership kind of like ours. I'm actually a member of it. I want to get good at golf. I, I watch what the pros are doing. I, w- I want their 20 years of experience on a kind of a condensed, you know, couple hour, hour course. There's so much you can learn off the water, off the, off the tee box, if you will, if you're a golfer. Uh, I mean, there's just a whole nother world of Intel out there and you'll be shocked. It's a lot of these small things. Like you read one little thing or you hear one thing in a podcast, you're like, all right, I'm going to put that to, to work the next time. And all of a sudden it does work. And you're like, holy smokes. I now have an edge over the fish. I have an edge over my buddies. Um, and to me, that's, that's really exciting. It's a big reason I, I read so much and it's a big reason I'm excited about this redfish secret. So I just spewed off a lot there. I'll let you talk. Luke's like, oh man, yeah, it was show, a lot. shut I your was, cake off. I'll take a nap. But, uh, but yeah, and this is, this, and you, you spoke a lot because it's very important. Uh, the, the, a big thing that we get is, oh my gosh, like, why would I, why would I get that? I just need to get in the water. I just, I just need some spots or I need to spend more time in the water. It's, it's I, I wish that was true, but it's not because it's I mean, like Joe said, it's like golf. If you go out there and you're and you're practicing the wrong mechanics, yes. you're just going to get a little bit better at doing the wrong thing. So that may, like it's really hard to go out to the driving range and just all of a sudden come up with a good golf swing. Like you you need to get a, a little bit of structure. And and the problem with just going to like YouTube videos or even magazines, the problem is that the, and that's again I did I, it was more that's magazine. What we did, yeah. I was a big reader. And so I read, I read every, like every inshore saltwater magazine I could get my hands on and I learned some great things, but a lot of it was snippets. It, it was very rare that there was a full recipe and, and just like cooking anything, you can cook a lot of the same things in, in various ways. And, and if you, but if you don't know the exact recipe, if you do like a bit of one and then a bit of another, it, it can also, it can often be bad. Um, so this this book and our courses and all that stuff, it's, it's really the, the full recipe from start to finish on going, again, on learning the trends, on learning the behavior patterns of redfish, most importantly, learning how they react to the changing conditions, um, learning the, the, the few, the select few lures that have the best odds of working throughout the seasons so that you can consistently catch redfish without having four tackle boxes of lures, uh, which I do as well. I learned, I had learned the hard way. And, uh, and then just how to put it all together, you know, the, the gear to use um, and then, and then how long to stay in a spot, you know, the, the seasonality of, of their, their movements and migrations, just all those little small things. It, it seems kind of small when you, when you look at them individually, but it's, it's the, it's a putting it all together. It's the full recipe is really where the, uh, I would say the magic happens. And, uh, and that's, again, that's the big missing link from the, a lot of the magazines and even the YouTube videos um, even our videos, right? Like we have some excellent videos, I think uh, might be biased, but, but it's impossible. And in, in like one or two videos to put it all together. That's yeah. why we have this, what has turned out to be a long book. I was, I was, exp- I was hoping it'd be like 40 pages. <laughs> and then as it kept going and, 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 and hear some questions from members, uh, okay, I need to, I need to add this. Okay. I need to add that. And it just got bigger and bigger. And, um, and, and, uh, and I think it's a, it's a pretty comprehensive plan. Yeah, it's by far the most comprehensive plan on the most important topic, which is finding the fish based on the conditions. That's yeah. the number one focus of the book. That's the number one focus that I recommend anybody who's looking to catch redfish or really any fish for that matter, um, needs to focus on. Once you find the fish, everything else is easier. You don't have to have the perfect rod. You don't have to have the perfect reel. You don't even have to have a boat or anything fancy. You just, if you know where the fish are, you're going to be catching more fish. Yep. And so here's your chance. Get Redfish Secrets. 100% of you should get this. It's, we, there's no convincing, right? I mean, it's literally free. We do ask for your email and that is for one big reason. We want to follow up with you. We want your feedback. Uh, this is going to go on Amazon as a real book that you will have to pay money for, but this is your chance to get the manuscript. Uh, we want to know who has it out there and we are going to follow up and, and just ask for some honest feedback on things that you loved, things that were confusing. You see, even has got some color pictures in here. Uh, it's, it's really a phenomenal book. That's at redfishsecrets.com. The other reason we want your email is if you haven't, 
uh, taking this up to get Redfish Mastery. If you're not an Insider member or VIP member, just haven't bought it in general, uh, we'll, we'll give you a special offer to get that as well. That does cost money. Uh, all the, the master courses, these mastery courses do cost money, uh, but we'll give you a special hookup for that. So, but first step is just go download the free book, completely free, just put your email in. And we're also gonna throw in these two videos. Uh, both Luke and Tony did one and they're each an hour long. And the a hundred percent of it is getting on online maps and targeting redfish in all four seasons. And we pick different areas. It is phenomenal. So I, I, I honestly, I would do that before you even dig in the, cause the book, I mean, it's a hundred, 120 or so pages. It, it's going to take a while to read, uh, watch those two videos. It, it is well worth the time. Even if you're an insider member, watch those videos. That's something we we haven't put out there. It's kind of was, we were saving it in the vault for a special moment. And then it was all about redfish. Like, Hey, let's do it for redfish secret. So uh, check that out. That's all free. Uh, what will happen is when you go to redfishsecrets.com, you put in your email and then uh, seven, 10 minutes, just, you know, however long it takes for our system to automatically shoot it to you. Uh, you'll see an email from Salt Strong with a link that'll have a link for the PDF. And uh, both of those videos will be embedded, embedded in there for you to watch. So that's at redfishsecrets.com. Yeah. And you might be asking, okay, like what's the catch? And, and there's no catch. Again, we want, we really want to have some, some constructive criticism of the yep. book. I'm a, I've been a teacher online for many years of, uh, of, of, for fishing. And, um, and I, I, I've always enjoyed reading. I've never been much of a writer. So even just like edits of uh, typos or just anything odd, we'd love to hear from you. And, and that's why we're doing it. So this is gonna be available for everywhere. And also we know that a, a lot of people are gonna learn a lot. Uh, to, again, this is something I wish I had access to. Mm -hmm. um, that would have saved me countless hundreds and maybe probably thousands of dollars of tackle that and, I- And humiliating trips. And, and humiliation is just, really just frustration. Uh, fishing has always been my, my biggest hobby um, as a kid. And it was just really frustrating going from a, like a good bass angler to like getting totally skunked or, or just having some like really good days and then just some terrible days when I started transitioning to saltwater. And, um, and so, yeah, we just, we just hope that it provides a lot of goodwill and we just hope that, uh, you know, a, a large amount of people will end up joining the, the fishing club our insider club, which is our, our ultimate goal really. Um, so that's, uh, that's why it's there, but we just love to hear your feedback and yep. uh, I think you're gonna love it. Yep. But for now, once again, if you made it this far, 100% of you should go to redfishsecrets.com. Just put in your best email and we'll shoot that thing over to you. PDF plus the two videos. And we want to follow up and just get some feedback. Uh, and just be honest. If you tell us, Hey, you haven't had a chance to read it. That's okay. Just be honest with us. Um, any and all feedback highlight typos. I'm sure there's some in there highlight anything that was confusing uh let us know if there's anything that needs more clarification um and just like we do with our mastery courses because they're online and they're interactive we go out and film new stuff we add videos uh quite often to the to the mastery courses as well so same goes for that if you get one of the mastery courses give us feedback uh, we love going out there and in 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 redoing stuff clarifying it making it simpler for you so guys hope that was uh helpful on these top five misconceptions and uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, go to redfishsecrets.com and get your free copy. Luke, good job, dude. It was fun. We out. Let's go fishing.